Some of you of a certain vintage might remember the Science Fair microcomputer trainer which was sold by Radio Shack at least in the early 80s, possibly in the late 70s, I'm not sure, which I acquired myself in the very early 80s as a teenager and spent countless hours uh, playing with it. What this trainer did was that it taught you assembly language um, and uh, got you familiar with hexadecimal operations and it did so using a uh, Texas Instruments TMS 1000 microcontroller with 2 kilobytes of ROM and a mere 64 bytes of RAM. Um, yes, this might seem quite low as far as size is concerned, but the ROM also contained a, a certain number of routines, subroutines, which you could use in your programs and significantly enhanced um, the capabilities of your programs. It was a very simple uh, computer which you built uh, as a kit uh, with point-to-point -point connections. Everything was exposed and it consisted mostly of uh, a uh, matrix, cheap matrix spring-loaded keyboard along with an 8-segment uh, LED for uh, data display as well as um, seven individual LEDs which were used primarily um, for address uh, display. It had a speaker um, and was powered by a 9 volt power supply, usually a 9 volt battery. It consumed very little power. Uh, the main issues with this trainer was that first of all it did not save anything so once you shut down the power your program was gone. Secondly, um, there was no way to input anything into it outside of using uh, the keyboard itself. Um, and lastly, editing programs on the trainer was laborious at best. Uh, say for example you wanted to insert an instruction somewhere in the program, well you had to shift all the following instructions one spot down in order to make uh, room for the new instruction and basically that meant re-entering uh, a good portion of the program manually. Um, furthermore, um, all the assembly instructions had to be translated to their equivalent hexadecimal opcode and entered as such. Um, you could not type in um, an, inst an assembly instruction directly into the trainer and so that was error prone and laborious as well. Nonetheless it was really a fun computer and a great introduction to computing in general. Uh, so what I wanted to do um, for a number of years was interface this computer, this trainer with another computer so that I could load it with programs uh, which were easily edited on the other computer and uh, that way they were stored and easily uh, usable on the trainer. Um, and what I chose to do here is to use the uh, venerable TI-99 4A computer from Texas Instruments designed in 1979 using the parallel port. And this little interface here um, which uh, basically consists of nine solid-state relays and a parallel port connection. Um, and it's a brute force method. What it does is basically emulates key presses uh, through the relays. It works just fine. There are more elegant ways of doing this, but the TI is unfortunately not fast enough to be able to do that without um, associated circuitry. Nonetheless, it does work just fine, as we'll demonstrate shortly. So, why don't we Expand our view a little bit here. There we are. And so, let's reset this. On the TI, um, you can use a text editor. Um, I like to use the Predator text editor. And um, we'll go ahead and load it.
And so the text editor will allow you to basically create your program in plain language, assembly language, and um, that will then be compiled by a NextB program, um, which I created, into uh, hexadecimal code that can be downloaded into the trainer. So why don't we go ahead and load um, a small demonstration program called DICE. And uh, what that program does is basically just simulate uh, the throwing of a six-sided die. The basic structure of um, the program um, consists of uh, starting with an org statement to indicate where in memory you want your program to load. 99.99% of the time it will be at location 0, but there might be some some interesting choices to be made with certain programs, so this flexibility was built in. Um, the opcodes, uh, there's a label at the start if you want one, and then there's an opcode and finally an operand. And um, the, uh, the labels, when they are referenced um, as an operand, um, they need to be pre prefixed with a star. This is my own convention, it just simplifies the programming. And finally, the program has to end with the end statement. So, as you can see, this is a lot more readable than um, entering a bunch of hexadecimal codes. Okay, so why don't we exit that. Let's reset. And we're going to go into Extended Basic. And we'll load the program the transfer program should call trainer. So we'll run it actually. Now this will take um, a few seconds to initialize and load. Um, patience is a virtue as with anything TI, particularly in extended basic. All right, so there we are. So the program has uh, a few options. The first option is what we call direct input. And basically all, all this does is uh, emulate key presses uh, on the trainer using key presses on the TI computer. Basically, if I go into direct mode, if I press the one key, you'll see it gets reflected on the hex lab. Two, three, four, A. And so on and so forth. So there are also uh, key combinations for uh, address setting, incrementing at the address, running the program, and um, what else? And resetting the computer. So this is this comes in handy because certain programs require certain startup sequence before they can be run, um, and for general experimentation as well. So we can go ahead and exit direct mode. Um, and then um, the other option, the second option, is to load a program as compared to the third option, which is load data. Uh, the load program option basically takes a text file, which I just demonstrated, uh, compiles it into a, into uh, hexadecimal code, and then sends it to the trainer. Uh, the load data part um, basically does not have any opcode, it's just a text file with a string of hexadecimal numbers, um, essentially data. Um, and so it's processed a little bit differently, but the end result is the same data is sent to the trainer as well. And you can um, select where in memory you want the data to be dumped that can come in handy for certain programs where you need some fixed values to be in memory. So why don't we demonstrate the load program first. So here we go, we enter a path. Where did I put it? Okay. So the program is called DICE, which is the one I just showed you. And so it's compiled in two passes. The first pass resolves the labels and checks for syntax errors and uh, invalid opcodes and the like. And the second pass actually compiles the program into uh, hexadecimal code. Um, it's pretty slow as you can see. All right.
right, so that's done. So now we're going to go ahead and send the code. So just press a key and now it will go ahead and send the code. that the binary LEDs are marching along the uh, memory map starting at zero. Almost there. Okay, so we're back into input mode. The code is now loaded. So all I have to do is reset um, and then press one and run. And here we go. So the um, hex LED is basically uh, running wild. It's just displaying uh, numbers uh, very fast, so it's hard to tell what number will be displayed next. So what the program does, it waits for key input, and I press any of the numeric keys from 1 to F, and then it will stop the LED, the hex LED, uh, at a certain number. Since it's going so fast, it's essentially a pseudo-random type of number from 1 to 6. So let's say press a key and we got a 1. If I want to do this again, uh, reset the computer, press 1, enter, and then press another the key again, and we've got a 5 this time, and so on. So that's a simple demonstration, but it shows that, um, you know, the program um, loading works just fine. So now why don't we move back to the main menu, and let's now load data and what I'm gonna load is basically the uh, the notes for Silent Night um, and uh, the trainer has a sub program which allows you to play musical notes and so this is the data for that sub -pro program um, and so uh, let's put in the path for that and it's called Silent so it's going to check, make sure there's an origin, and then it's going to start loading, and there it goes. Now this will take um, a while. Um, it's a fairly long string of data. Um, feel free to watch uh, the blinking lights in uh, quiet comfort or meditation, or even easier, just fast forward to where the, uh, <laughs> the data is loaded. I should mention that um, the uh, program uh, I have on the TI uses a set of assembly subroutines I wrote uh, which access the parallel port at a low level and allow me to control it uh, any way I, I wish so I can send and receive data accordingly. In this case we're only sending data, we're not receiving any data from the trainer. Although that's not uh, an impossibility at some point, but that's not the purpose of this demonstration. If you can get your hands on a uh, on this microcomputer trainer, I would strongly encourage that you do so. It's really a great uh, educational device, um, and uh, the manual is absolutely uh, outstanding. Um, it's a really thorough manual that manages to teach you complex topics um, without really feeling that you're learning that hard. It's really a reflection of the Radio Shack of old. Unfortunately, this has gone by the wayside. 
in this day and age, which is a sad story. Okay, we are done. So we're back in direct input mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the trainer. So basically resetting just puts the address, points the address at uh, zero, zero, which is the start of the address space. And then all I have to do is press A and then enter. And here we go. So, that's it for this project, um, yet another fun one, um, and I'm pretty pleased by it actually. Um, I'm looking forward to um, reacquainting myself with the trainer, and uh, now that I have a facility to easily edit and store programs, um, I can really get uh, fancy with it, so I'll see what I can come up with. In any case, feel free to leave comments uh, or questions in the comment section. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.